Coyote Swinnett. Summit League quarterfinals, day two. Winner of this one gets top seed at South Dakota State at 6 p.m. Monday night. What a big starting lineup for South Dakota. Boogie Anderson, a huge piece down the stretch, second half of this season. But that guy right there, Tassos Comateros, has been hot, as hot as anyone in the Summit League how over the, the last couple of weeks. How about the footwork, the up and under, and the ability to finish with the offer left hand? Pretty good job by Josiah Alec of walling up, but better re recovery and counter by Comateros. Here's Marvin Nesbitt, the young man that Brian talked about. That shot way too strong. Back comes Anderson into the front court. Yeah, you could tell he didn't have the usual elevation on that shot. Boogie Anderson has been very efficient, Sean. 50% shooting. His, his range has been a bit limited, of course, but he's been very effective offensively. And he's also been effective on this end of the floor as well, GM. Remember the all-defensive team here in the Summit League. Outstanding year for Boogie Anderson. Zaya Alec missed a lot of time with a back injury. Just came back a couple of weeks ago. He buries a triple here. Last four games for Alec, 19 points, just about nine rebounds a game. Welcome back. Right? Welcome back indeed, and has ex extended his range as well. 34% shooting from behind the arc on the year. Active hands defensively. Get used to seeing that out of this Kansas City club. Hunter Goodrick. Trying to back it down on Arkel Lamar. Ribs off, Nesbitt hard to the floor. But it appears to be no worse for the wear. Back comes Gilliard, inside out, Martin. One more kick, Lamar for three. Nice job by Lamar of trailing the play. Just come, came off his hand awkwardly. Lamar, a second team all Summit League performer for the Roots. They're going to try to post up Boogie Anderson there. Nice job of reading it. Excellent job by Martin Jay. Literally just picked his pocket and cruises the other way for two. He went from being the victim to being the victimizer there. They were trying to post him up. Martin would have none of it. Once the offensive player Anderson turned his head, he went and dug it down. Nice job by Martin. Make no mistake, that's what Sam Martin's on the floor for in this starting lineup defensively. Really buys into what Billy Donlin wants to be on that end of the floor. A couple of quick ones to start the night for Tassos Cavateros. Very impressive by the big fella, Jay, because both baskets, one with the right, the first one with the left. You just don't see a lot of guys that are ambidextrous around the rim. Offensive foul drawn by Cruz Perro Hunts. Martin going downhill, nice job outside the restricted area. Excellent job by the second team all Summit League performer, Cruz Piro Hunt, of stepping in there. Feet set well outside the restricted area. Nice job defensively. Both of these teams communicate extremely well. Martin beat the initial defender, but the weak side help was there. And you see Gilliard disrupting the pass. Nothing easy. No pass is a given against Kansas City. Neither are points. They only give up 67 per outing. Tops in the Summit League in that particular area. Take a look at two head coaches. Todd Lee in his fourth year. He's done a solid job. Last year's Summit League Coach of the Year, but you could argue he did yes. as good or better a job this year. And how about Billy Todlin? He had a lot of roster turnover after last year, Sean. And here he is, has his team in the tournament as the number four. So he really tied for third in the standings. And, and also had half the year without his big fella, number 20, Josiah Alec, as well. Dumps it inside, Alec up and over Comateros. Rebound poked around and collected by Shamari Allen. Nesbitt working on Mason Archambault. Gilliard, boy, he does mm. not need a lot of room, does he, Sean? He does not, and you have to come out hands high because you mentioned it. Quick release, even though he's generously listed at about 5'10", you have to come out hands high because he gets it off extremely quickly. Gilliard almost. 
Got another steal there. At just over 10 per contest, they were minus 16 in the two games against Kansas City. Well, Kansas City is going to get after you. They're going to make every possession a trip to the dental chair, no question. Xavier Fuller out there for the first time tonight for South Dakota. As Peril Hunt drives in on Allen. Looked like he intentionally did that, and he's not going to get a shot off. Never drew rim. Outstanding team defense. They forced the spin dribble, and then you saw not one, but two white jerseys come over there and contest that offering for Piero Hunt, who tried to finish with the offhand, and as you mentioned, Jay, it didn't hit the backboard, so the shot clock does not reset. Great job of communicating defensively by the Ruse. Hilliard got that space again. This one left iron, rebound pulled in by Goodrick. Goodrick, no stranger to rebounding, third in the Summit League in that particular area. Had 19 rebounds earlier this season against North Dakota. Good look here for Fuller. Nice block out by Alec. Really good job. Zip the pass in there to Allen. Gilliard. Nice help there. Help. Nice job. Yep. Nesbitt. A little bit of a size advantage on Perro Hunt. Scores over the top plus the foul. Tough kid. Not playing at 100%. You see the wrap down there on his lower body. He was able to absorb the contact and finish. His eyes never left the rim. And that's a bonus if you're Coach Billy Donlin and the Ruse because you're not only looking at a guy that can give you a few points, but on the defensive end, seven rebounds per outing, the defensive player in the year. Marvin Nesbitt. Oh. One and a half steals per game on the season. Playing in his 121st career game tonight. That ties a program record at Kansas City. And has been getting a break here. And because of that injury, keep an eye on him on the side. And they're probably going to get him up and keep him moving. They don't want that calf area to tighten up. And as soon as I say that, he sits down. <laughs> <laughs> Offensive foul called against Mason Arshambled here as he lowered the shoulder. Good job by Gilly. That's the right call. And folks at home may be saying, well, he wasn't completely squared up. You don't have to be. And especially when the offensive player, in that case, Archambault, lowers the shoulder, the defender's entitled to that space just as much. Good job by Gilliard to giving himself up. Over on the end of the Kansas City bench. Meanwhile, Sean, you were dead on the money. That's been oh, my medical training there. coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Arkel Lamar, one of the oldest players in college basketball. Arkel Lamar transferred in from UMBC. He was part of that historic yes. win over Virginia, the 16 over the one a couple of years back. Had a double double. Had a double double in that game, as a matter of fact. For yeah. the Retrievers. South Dakota's turned it over three times in the last three minutes. Not the recipe Todd Lee wants to see from his team tonight. And we're going to get a blocking foul called against Perro Hunt. And I tell you what, it's a small thing. When it was a really good job by the officials. You had the officials, they blew simultaneous whistles, and then you're going to see them both post. And what I mean, the hand comes up, you can see the official on the downside, and then the, the official on the far sideline. They looked at each other to decide who was going to take the call, so you didn't have one of those infamous blarges. A really good job. <laughs> Todd Lee voicing his displeasure. He doesn't agree with John Yorkovich on that particular decision, but it stands as called, obviously, and that's two fouls on Cruz Perrell Hunt. Somehow doesn't roll over the cylinder for Josiah Alec. Eleven to six, Kansas City. Six zero run for the Ruse. In the last two and a half minutes. What a really good job by Nesbitt. Good find there from Goodrick. Nice job Archambault. by Nesbitt. Yeah, and a good job. That was a really smart play by Archambault because he saw the double team coming down on Goodrick. He understood he had to get rid of him, and he took that extra step, Jay, to put himself in the vision so Goodrick could find him. Here's the tiles within a pair. Nesbitt back on the floor now. Quick break for him. 
Anderson Kopp out there for Kansas City, number 11 as well. The two teams trying to feel each other out here in the early going in Sioux Falls. Really good job by Archambault of taking away. Gilliard wanted to get all the way to the rim, but Archambault moved his feet just enough to force that fadeaway. Good job. Eric Oliver in the lineup. This is him right here. Timothy Barnes out there for Kansas City as well. Goodrick working on top, trying to back him down. The Aussie fouled in the process. He'll go to the free throw line. And that's a foul if you are the Rouge you don't want to give. Because what you've done, you can tell Goodrick wants to get to that left hand. You forced him to the right. Make him complete with the off hand. You like the aggressiveness, but make him shoot over the top. He's claiming verticality, but he broke it when he came down on there. They did a good job of forcing Goodrick away from his strong hand. They didn't need to bail him out with the foul. Well, if you're going to put anybody at the foul line for South Dakota, this would be the guy to do it. 44% on the season. For Hunter Goodrick, redshirt sophomore to Sydney, Australia. Redshirted last season, stayed back in his home country due to COVID complications. As Barnes checks out. Lamar returns for Kansas City here. Seven points, seven rebounds this season for Goodrick, who knocks down the second, replaced by Damani Hayes. And Damani Hayes, you and I have seen him a couple of times this year together. He is so active, especially on the offensive window. So if you are the ruse of Kansas City, you must locate him when a shot goes up because he's in there to make the hustle play. A crossover and a two-handed flush for Marvin Nesbitt. Ooh, it's appropriate that a kangaroo has hops. Nice job by Nesbitt of getting in there and finishing with the Thorpe. Boy, you saw that lane open up when he switched hands, Sean. Tomateros oh, answers for three. Really nice job of misdirection. They get the defense flowing to the right. Tomateros fills in behind, gets his feet set. Excellent execution and good response by the Coyotes. Last four attempts have been from beyond the arc for South Dakota. Tomateros gets that one. Both teams two of four from the perimeter thus far. Under 10 here, Lamar. Working on Hayes, that's well defended. Really nice job. He walled up and forced Lamar to fade away. That shot had no chance. Hayes hands off, here's Oliver. Good screen there. Really good. Tomatero st stood still, Sean. That's the name of the game. Excellent job on that dribble hand. Of excellent point as well, Jay, because a lot of times you'll see guys kind of roll through that, that dribble handoff. He came there, and Gilliard just got caught. Gilliard, nice dish. Swatted away by our shamble. That is not an easy block to complete without fouling. Xavier Fuller. That they're holding down the ruse, a team that's much improved this year offensively, thanks in large part to Evan Gilliard. But Kansas City just 5 of 14 to this point. A good help by Hayes. Really good job by Hayes on that curl action. Here's Lamar. Ooh. Shook off Hayes quite literally, and he's a little slow to get up. I think they gave him a flop warning as well. That happened real fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. You know, you got to call the French police because someone's missing a jock. <laughs> All right, so they get the flop warning, so nothing, no harm done for no. South Dakota there. But on the next one, again, remember, it's technical foul. Regardless of, 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 whom, of who it does, right. yep, of who commits that act. 16 15, your score after that bucket from Arkel Lamar, his first two of the night. Foul on the floor. Let's check it with Brian Shaw. All right, thanks so much, guys. Kansas City, the way they play, it's a unique style, right? 
their turnover margin is fifth best in the nation at plus five. But the downside of that is they are 339th in the nation in fouls committed per game at over 20. I talked to a couple of summer league officials that have had Kansas City this year, and I said, what's the challenge of officiating Kansas City? And he said, they will push your limits, but they do a good job of adjusting as the game goes along, depending on how the game is called. So credit to Billy Dial and how they do it. Absolutely, and credit to Damani Hayes for getting to work on the offensive glass. Th that's why he's in there, Jay. We talked about it when he checked in. Really good job, and then he didn't put the ball on the floor. A lot of times you'll see guys get in that position, and they're off balance, and they use that rhythm dribble to get themselves under control. That allows the defense to come in and dig it out. But Hayes saw where the drive was coming. He located to the opposite side of the rim, and it paid dividends. Really good job by Hayes, and as we've seen here over the last four or five weeks, he has just given quality minutes and a lot of energy plays for the Oaks. Over 19 minutes per game on the season. Hayes not asked to score a lot, Sean, but when he does, he does it efficiently, over 60%. It's the three-point play, and South Dakota leads by four with under 10 minutes to play first half. How about that? Eric Oliver getting on the floor. I think he slid onto the sideline there, and the ball will stay with Kansas City. And, and what I love about that double team is that there was no hesitation. When Oliver decides to come, he's coming after him. Play. Almost looked yeah. like he rolled over the top of the ball and before it was out of bounds. Gilliard taking the inch he had to get that shot off. And good hustle over there creates an opportunity to run here for South Dakota, but they didn't take advantage of it. You know, with Comentaro's knocking down those two early threes, they could set up a backdoor cut because if Alec doesn't close out under control, he could dive to the rim, could Comatero. He's almost got another offensive board. Now we go back the other way. Lamar between the defenders, and the foul is going to be called on the floor. That was some strength by Lamar. I mean, there was no question what he was going to try to do. Now watch all the hands that tried to dig it out. And he will have absolutely none of it. Not only did he not allow it to be stripped, he had the upper body strength to be able to rip through and get it up toward the rim. Goodrick returns from South Dakota as Comateros takes his seat. We mentioned his age. Arkel Lamar, one of the top 10 oldest players in all college basketball. 25 years and two months as of now. Do you get discounts with that? <laughs> you have to wait. Probably eat dinner a little earlier. Alec for Dang. three. The job that he did, it was so subtle, but it was so important. When the pass was in route, he got that lead foot underneath him so he was able to catch and release. That doesn't come unless you've worked on that extensively. Anderson inside Goodrick. Swings it out now, Fuller. Ten on the shot clock. Anderson spins in on Alec off the window. And that's what he does. If he's going with that left hand, he's either going to cross over or spin. If you are Alec there, you know, have to understand, he has not just not made a three, he hasn't attempted one this year. So you can gap him. Don't allow him to try to beat you off the dribble. Help there from Oliver. And now he's, they got to get out to Lamar. A little late in doing so. And the rebound collected by Fuller. Nice job by Fuller getting inside position there. Fuller also missed extensive time this year with an injury. Thought about it, now I'll put it on the deck. Help coming from Nesbitt, that's what he does. Other way, what a defensive. Put your shoulder to the rim, or your posterior is gonna go to the floor. <laughs> Oliver with it, guarded by Gilliard. Under 10 to shoot, Cruz Perrohan out there with two fouls. Goodrick's gonna have to speed it up here. Falling away, left-hander. Nice job by Goodrick of keeping that alive because you saw Nesbitt, the defensive player of the year, come down there and try to help with the strong hand hedge, but Goodrick able to break through. Nesbitt. 
Hester has some space out there. Now works it in on Peril Hunt. And you saw how careful Cruz had to be there. And a, a nice job by Gilliard of giving himself up as a decoy. Boogie Anderson is on Gilliard to try to slow him down. And Gilliard cut hard. That took Boogie Anderson with him. That allowed the single post up down there. Nesbitt, if he is hampered by that leg injury, Sean, he's gutting it out. He's got seven points. Good look, wing three for Goodrick. That's a 30% shooter knocking that down off a scramble situation. Two just possessions, two scores for Goodrick. Just his eighth three-pointer of the season. And South Dakota has a six-point lead, which is its largest of the night. And a hold will be called against Devonnie Hayes. His second. Another look at that last triple from Hunter Goodrick. Loose ball situation. Both teams going to the floor. Goodrick able to get his feet set. You want to talk about a bonus. You mentioned to Jay, a guy that only makes about 30% of his three-point offerings. Does a lot of his work around the rim, not just offensively, but defensively as well. That's a bonus on a scramble situation by the Yotes. Anderson Kopp checks in, replacing Arkell Lamar. This might not be a bad time to get a post up down, down low for Alec and try to get something going toward the rim here. They were trying to find a screen and roll set up there. Good job by Colin Terrison, kind of nuking that. Gilliard. Rebound pulled in by Comateros. Excellent team defense. They forced Kansas City all the way out behind the three-point line. Gilliard wanted to turn the corner, wasn't available. Evan Gilliard in the two games against South Dakota scored 31 and 20, Sean. He's one of five so far tonight. That was a three-pointer early in this contest. Harold Hunt swatted from behind. Nesbitt get called for the foul, and I think that's his second. Really nice job. Watch how they vacate that right side of the floor. They vacate it and allow Hero Hunt to get to the, to the right hand. Good job of vacating. Well, that's pretty good recovery there by Nesbitt. Check that. They actually called that foul on Gillier. So his first. And Cruz Perro Hunt. He gets the roll. Uh, the first of his two free throws, an 83% shooter at the strike. We talked a lot about the defense that Kansas City plays, and rightfully so, Sean. But South Dakota, oh, yeah. would you believe, one of two Southern League teams that actually finished top four in both scoring offense and defense this season. You know who the other one was? No. They went 18 0. South Dakota State. I should have known that one. Foul on the floor, whistle against South Dakota. And I got to tell you, the reason that, that probably didn't pop in what's left of my mind is the fact that the early part of the year, South Dakota State was struggling on that end of the floor. And to their credit, they kind of ratcheted it up. I'd say the, la you know, the last 12, 14 ball games of the Summit League slate. So Lamar checks into the game. So it's caught back to the bench. This is a one-on-one -on -one for Evan Gilliard. Two years at UTEP, two years at New Mexico State. And he has taken the Summit League by storm this year. First team all league selection and an all, and the newcomer of the year, as you mentioned earlier. One of nine guys in college basketball this year to have five games of 30 points or more. And I think it's safe to say he is diminutive. He's not the biggest guy you're going to see Listed out there. what appears to be a generous 5'10", yes. Yeah, I think they're using the metric system or something <laughs> crazy. That's, that's, that's going to be a flat one, yep. And there's the warning. So both sides have been warned now, and Archambault finishes through it. Solid first half here for Mason Archambault. On both ends of the floor. And you, you have to like, I, they were trying to set this up for quite a while. For Archambault to be able to post up Gilliard, they get it there. The officials don't bite. Nice job by Archambault of understanding time, space, and the advantage he had. Four straight field goal makes now for South Dakota. He's shot it extremely well. They're at 61% for the half now. Eight 
point advantage. Nesbitt, nice dish down to Shabari Allen. And a good job by Allen of keeping moving, right? He didn't become stationary. That allowed Nesbitt to keep the dribble alive. Allen came along the baseline, and because Nesbitt had his head up and was drawing defensive attention, it allowed Allen to sneak through the back door. Harris, good job keeping the handle on that one. Amateros, ooh, he did that yep. shot. Talk about being strong, that was it. He just didn't finish. And they've been trying to set that one up as well. Because if he knocked down the three, they were waiting for that dive cut. Amateros just wasn't able to convert it. I tell you what, you turn your head and Gilliard's gonna make you pay. How quick did he get down the floor right there? It's the second field goal for him. He does have seven points. That was a dangerous pass. That was almost a steal. In and out for our shamble. Nesbitt drops it through. And a really good play by Josiah Allen. As, as Nesbitt's dribbling toward him, he vacates the area. That allows Nesbitt to complete at the rim. But I tell you what, the Coyotes have also been completing at the rim. Goodrick does it inside, does it outside, knocks it down. We've got a good one here in Sioux Falls. Here Goodrick gets it back. Second try is good. Good quality minutes from Hunter Goodrick here yeah, in this first half. And a nice set coming out of that dead ball situation. Little dive from that high post. And just a good job, but not able to convert initially, but cleaned up his own mess. Has been up and over. Merrill Hunt, who, again, with those two fouls, is probably not defending the way he would like to. And a nice recognition by Kansas City of understanding the exact situation that the second team, all summit league performer, finds himself in and go right at him. Well, Dakota's led by as many as eight in this first half, but it's an 8 2 run for the Ruse to pull back within a pair. Comateros cut off. Three point look in and out for Cruz Perrell Hunt. Allen inside out, deep three coming, Lamar. <laughs> Lamar doing a good job of getting his feet under him. You mentioned that was deep. He needed his legs and he got his legs set as the pass was in route. Started with a really good defensive thrust by Archambault, forcing Gilliard to the off or right hand there, not allowing him to get downhill. Wide open underneath. You don't see too many defensive lapses like that out of Kansas City, but Boogie Anderson was all alone. Well, they, what they did is they ran the double team, and as a result, they turned their head, and Boogie Anderson went to the place that was wide open, the rim. Hillier. Yeah, I, I, I know he's got a green light. I don't know what color that was, because that was fast, and it was deep, and I don't think Coach Billy Dunn was very pleased. Coach, he's one minute to play the first half. Working on Lamar here. Foul there. You heard the foul call from Todd Lee before you heard the whistle. But that'll put Goodrick back at the free throw line. Now watch where Anderson comes from. You turn your head, you go. Boy, they just let him go, they didn't did. they? They did, yeah. And you mentioned it. A rare, easy shot. What allowed that eight rare, easy shot was a rare breakdown in communication defensively. Because if someone's going there, First of all, if you're going to make the double team, you don't go halfway. You know, you can't be Switzerland. You got to go or you stay. And, and Boogie Anderson's like, I'll just waltz right to the rim. Nice job of recognition there in the half court by the Coyotes. No room for neutrality no. in March, Sean. No. Goodrick gets the first of his two free throws. Man, this has been fun. Good game, Jim. Really entertaining. Not quite 20 minutes of basketball. Gooder could get the double figures here in the first half. That is a bonus. Gets them both. He's three of four at the free throw line again. Under 50% on the year. Ten points, five rebounds, two assists for Hunter Goodrick in this first half. Alec 
Ball poked oh, away. Kyle nice. has come away with it. That's beautiful. Don't reach down. Go down and dig it out. And Boogie Anderson shows you why. And also shows you why he's a member of the all-defensive team. For a little help here. About three seconds the difference between the shot clock and the game clock. The Comateros. Dumps it off. Anderson lays it in. And Time out, Billy Dodlin. And the four or five possessions, Jay, is that they have used the defensive intensity of the Ruse against them. That's resulted in some easy back doors. Alec tried to muscle it. Particular that he would have been paying close attention to was in each of those two regular season meetings between these two teams. They, Kansas City had a huge first half run, which really ultimately decided the game. So they're in a whole different position here, up five as we start the second half. And, and they've also gotten themselves a lot of extra possessions with their willingness to go out and dig down loose balls, rebound the basketball, nice execution coming out of halftime, getting it to Nesbitt inside. They clear it, allow him to get into the lane. This end of the floor, you have to believe, Coach Billy Donlin emphasized emphatically. They have to lock down on this end of the floor. A lot of uncharacteristic easy shots given up. Let's check it with Brian Shaw to hear what Todd Lee had to say. Yeah, Todd Lee overall very pleased with the effort. Said we really got what we wanted. Biggest key for us is we slowed the game down. We took our time on possessions, made the defend the entire shot clock, and we only had five turnovers. So we turned it over 15 times in each of the last two games against Kansas City. If we can play that clean in the second half, we got a good shot. Definitely a big key coming into this game, as we said. Now a foul called against Boogie Anderson. That'll be his second. And that two possessions, two post-ups for Nesbitt. And really good spacing by Kansas City on both possessions, fanning out some shooters to the three-point line, taking their defenders with them, allowing Nesbitt some space to operate one-on-one. -on -one. Nesbitt a team high, 13 points for Kansas City. Again, kind of gutting it out tonight with an injury suffered in practice earlier this week. Good job by Piro Hunt. Really good job by Piro Hunt. Now that's tip to live ball. Got a hustle under five to shoot here for Gilliard. Throws it up. And rebound grabbed by Comateros. Again, Todd Lee going back to those five turnovers on this end of the floor, Sean. And they had four of them pretty early. They did. Yes, and, and I tell you what, these teams are really well coached. Two possessions, each coach sees the respective mismatch that they enjoy on the offensive end of the floor, be it size or experience. Here it's size for Piro Hunt, taking Martin down in the block, and he'll shoot a couple. Piro Hunt, no field goals as of yet for the Coyotes' leading score on the season, but... Perfect at the foul line. Shamari Allen returns to the lineup, placing Sam Martin for Kansas City. Who's four for four, South Dakota. Now eight of nine at the stripe for the ball game. And you can tell that Coach Billy Donlin saw the same thing we did. He knew that they were going to come right back down and go at Martin again and a moving screen trying to free up Gilliard. Goes against Lamar. That's his third, so a big one there for Arkell Lamar. Arahant, good look here. Boy, that was a nice set. They hit a stagger screen. Good job of moving without the ball, but Harrell Hunt just not able to knock it down. Right back to Nesbitt, back door, Allen with the flush. That's the second time he's done that, Jay. You know, he's made himself available. He doesn't become stationary in that corner. When the double team came, Nesbitt turned soft from where the double team came, and then Allen just drove right to the rim. Pass to space it out a little bit here. Congestion over there. Anderson. Nowhere to drive it. Here's Goodrick now, late shot clock. Working on Lamar, those three fouls. Tough shot for Hunter Goodrick, he's got 12. And, and you, you can tell the confidence with which he's playing. Did you see the bounce in his step as he went back defensively? He's feeling it. You, you gotta go back in there because even though they tried to take away his left hand, he was still able to turn and get to it. 
off a season high for Hunter Goodrich. Lahr rises up. Oh, he's 25 and he's showing his experience there with that little drop step inside pivot that creates space between himself and the defender. So you have the option to either shoot that mid range jump shot and if they don't close out on a control, you can use the dribble. Amateros back it out on Alec. Really nice job of walling up there. Alec all alone, another throw down. That's why he keep running, Jay. He ran right to the rim. Good job of dribbling with your head up. That allowed Allen to get all the way. How about the lift in the last two possessions given by Allen? 15 points now for Marvin Nesbitt to lead all scores. Double coming against Comateros, who's trying to fight through the contact there with Ooh. Allen. And he's, oh. I, th I think they, yeah, they got Comateros. You get the frustration boil over and directed his comment toward Brooks Little, the official, and Little teed him up. And a good job by Allen as well, because Alec and Comateros were going at one another. Earlier in this half, they got Comateros with clearing out. Now he's talking to Alec right here. That's kind of tough. Alec had his back turned to him, but that had been brewing for a while. And then a really smart job by Allen of getting to Josiah Alec and kind of calming him down so he doesn't get goaded into doing something. Well, Gilliard hits the first of the two technical shots, gets the second as well. And out possession on top of that for Kansas City. That's four, five point possession here for the Ruse. Well, motion gets the best there of Tassos Comateros, and he's got three yep, fouls now. Right. And Kansas City a chance to take the lead here. And let's see if Kansas City tries to go right at Alec and see where Comateros' head is right now. Because he has to forget about that last sequence and just lock in. Go right back to Nesbitt. Was looking for that same backdoor pass to Allen, and this time the Kyles were there. And Boogie Anderson read it. He knew exactly where they wanted to go. Allen got it back. Or excuse me. Oh, look at that foul situation. We got seven on the board already. Four for South Dakota, three for Kansas City. And you know what, Jay? I think the officials sense that this game has gotten physical, and they're tightening it up. Boser, 35 out there for the first time tonight for Kansas City. Goodrich, well, how about the defensive play by Goodrich? Harold Hunt trying to drop in the last 15 28 because both of these teams are attacking. Most recently, Piro Hunt. That was a very difficult shot. Not only have to play through contact. But we saw it going to the break. He lost control on the ball and had to regain on the way up before the conversion. Seven points now for Peril Hunt. Five of those have come at the free throw line. Nesbitt continues to attack. Really good job by Nesbitt of attacking that inside foot of the larger defender. And then his teammates did their job as well by fanning out to the three point line, which created a clear driving angle. Now for our shamble. And foul underneath. I think that's going to go against Boser. And, and Boser did a pretty good job, Jay, initially of coming out with the help on the hedge on the dribble drive. But then he got down, and Comateros was able to sit down in the post, and he was trying to come up over the top. And rather than moving his feet, they got him. It's kind of that swim move. Two fouls. In. Gone to 5 4, Kansas City over South Dakota. Tipped out of bounds. Now struggled to get that one inbounded. Nice shot by Poser there of coming out there and contesting. So now they'll move over in front of their own bench. Try again. Still 20 on the shot clock. Go, 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 
Backdoor, Anderson. Alec tried to close it off, but was a little tardy. Anderson just does such a good job of once he notices the defender turning his head, he goes right to the rim. Back to four, 49-45, and again, Nesbitt. He'll go to the free throw line. And, and I tell you what I like about that, Jay. How many times do you see teams, something works, and then you don't see it for like two weeks, all right? Now, Nesbitt, they've cleared out the side of the floor. He was able to score the possession before. Keep going to it until the opposition is able to stop it effectively and consistently. It's a third foul on Damani Hayes. Two free throws for Nesbitt, 70% at the line on the season. You're on the money. I mean, he has put the team on his back here. We, we wondered how oh, effective man. he was going to be, Sean. He's leading the way here. He, he really is. And, and you don't think that his teammates understand the physical situation that he's in. And they're going to kind of dig down a little bit themselves. And a little bit of frustration there by Nesbitt as he leaves a couple at the foul line wanting. Well, that's the second foul on Marvin Nesbitt. 16 foul for Kansas City. So the Coyotes on the next whistle forward will be shooting free throws for the duration of this ball game. Well, Hunt got caught hung up there, left it short, leaves it short again. The defense from the Roots. Oh, nice jump by Archambeau moving his feet. Three comes up off the front of the rim. That took effort. That was just a straight up effort play by Archambeau of moving his feet because Gilliard had a full head of steam with that strong hand and he wasn't able to take complete advantage. Anderson stripped. Oh, you don't do that. He threw That's it away. Cop. Ooh, they got bailed out there. I have stopped there. Should have been a foul there. Jay, you, you never save the ball underneath your own basket, especially if you're going to save it, you have to throw it toward midcourt. Kansas City, very, very fortunate there. Nesbitt skips it over, cop for three. How about the pass by Nesbitt? It hit Cop right in the shooting pocket. Cop did his work as well when the ball was en route, but that pass hit Cop right where he could get it and go up before the defense had any chance to recover. Cop's a guy who started 26 games for the Blues this year. His role's diminished to here. A little bit found the stretch. A big shot there. Blocking foul underneath. I think Bozer was in the restricted area coming over to try and be a secondary defender. And a nice job by Comenteros not letting the ball stick. He was able to get it to Perro Hunt there because he didn't Hold on to the ball. That got it, and the closeout was late. Cop, that's really, the, even though the foul's not going to go on Cop, he'll get credit for it or the blame for it in the film session because he came over, did not close out under control on that quick reversal by Comateros. I think Bozier actually did get his feet outside the arc there, Sean, but it did not get set. Heavy contact with Carroll Hunt. He continues to knock him down at the free throw line. Lamar checks in for Kansas City. Eric Oliver coming on for South Dakota. And in a game that right now has been nip and tuck the entire time, two-point ball game. How about if you're USD and you have a backcourt that shoots 93 and 84 percent? Gilliard shot blocked by our shamble. Nice move by Lamar, but too strong. Good strong rebound by Hero Hunt too, with two hands in traffic. Oliver. Best against those teams above them. Yes. We're tight ones. And that's the holistic picture. If you, if you break it down over the last couple of weeks, USD comes in winning five of their last six. So they started to put things together, and the backcourt has been a big reason for that. But, boy, Hunter Goodrick has been a revelation on both ends of the floor, especially offensively, showing some versatility that we haven't seen for extended periods of time. Nesbitt with the basketball in his hands. We've seen that a lot in this second half as we check in again with Brian Shaw. With the last two huddles, 
checking in with Kansas City. Billy Dylan all about, we got to do a better job on the defensive glass. We got to continue to defend. And when we get the ball, we got to continue to go and push tempo, not playing fast enough, getting caught in this half court game. On the other side for Todd Lee, wants his guys to continue to stay aggressive, attacking the paint. Let's knock down our free throws and put this game away. Two trips to, and then last trip to the free throw line. Yeah, if, I'm sorry, Jay. If you watch his rotation, well, he doesn't have a lot of margin for error. You usually see the backspin. It comes off his hand. The guide hand stays on there for a period of time. It's got a little bit of a side spin rather than the traditional backspin. Knocks them both down this time. And lead down to five, 55-50. To that one now Comateros into the corner here's Oliver three point look for Tassos oh if you don't dribble a loose ball Gilliard did committed a cardinal sin in basketball Jay you don't dribble a loose ball you grab it with two hands and USD makes him pay so they go live ball turnover here and now we're looking at the clock they're, they're gonna they're trying to determine if there's a change of possession Started with a pretty good half court. See right there, he tried to dribble it. Grab it with two hands. If you do that, this little powwow, there's no need for it because you're going the other way. You know, Gilliard just an outstanding player, but there just had a mental lapse in terms of one of the most fundamental things that you can execute. All right, let's keep the basketball. We'll put 25 on the shot clock there. Good job by Alex. Look how far he pushed out Comateros. Remember how physical it was between these two a couple of minutes ago, and it's the same story. Comateros trying to get it up and through. Those guys are going to sleep all night, Jay. Lamar driving oh, through and scoring on Xavier Fuller. That was just grown man strength right yes, there. Yes, it was. 5.52. He put his shoulder right to the rim. Here with our shamble. Comateros, late close from Alec, but he disrupted it just enough. Comateros kind of shot that straight leg. He didn't have his knees bent. That, that, as a result, it was short. E3, way, uh, way off the mark from Lamar. Billy <laughs> Dollar's look was priceless. Oh. There's an emoji that looks it, like it, that. Yeah. Just hands up. I get that a lot. <laughs> Throw it over the top to Goodrick. Good, good job, just keeping that ball in play. Our shamble. And that's going to be whistled against Xavier Fuller. And it'll be the seventh team foul on South Dakota. That's going to be a one and one on the other end for Kansas City. that heads to the free throw line. And Jay, we talked about the foul shooting prowess of the backcourt of the Coyotes. As a team, on the other side of the equation, the ruse of Kansas City, 68% from the free throw line as a team, last in the Summit League in that particular area. Coyotes top five. Lamar. Knocks down the first to earn the bonus. He is 52% yeah. at the strike. And Gilliard first team selection. Markel Lamar, Marvin Nesbitt, second team picks for Kansas City this year. But Lamar knocks down both free throws. It's a one point ball game with under 10 minutes to play. Don't go anywhere. Four pass. Squad, at the very least, you're going to have a chance at a bonus situation. Gilliard 
Tough shot there. And Archambeau, what a job of attacking that left hand and, and not allowing Gilliard to get confident with his strong hand and forcing him to try to beat you with his off or right. Stays with South Dakota, 12 on the shot clock. I'll tell you what, Shamari Allen has been a nice lift. We've seen him sprint the floor, get a couple of baskets in here. They ran a little curl cut, did the Coyotes, trying to get a little uh, pass going toward the basket, but good active hands by Allen took it away. Allen, a junior out of Asheville, North Carolina, played at Cowley Community College. He was a national runner-up last season with that program. He averaged 11 and a half points on that team. Knocked out of bounds, and now Perro Hunt inbounds for South Dakota. Oh. Now, Otero saw alone. It looked like Lamar wanted to go help out on somebody else, and he left Tassels all alone. Yeah. Alec and Lamar got caught up in a breakdown in communication, and Coach Billy Donald's talking to him about it. They both went to the same guy, just a rare breakdown on that end of the floor. Nesbitt trying to answer shot blocked by Goodrick. How about the response? They go right back to what's worked for him in Nesbitt, and Goodrick has the answer. Harold Hunt. I think that one got him. I think Nesbitt got a piece of that one. He did, and how about the two-hand rebound in traffic by Lamar? Hilliard thought about trying to thread the needle there, went with the tough little floater instead, and it rims off. I mean, nothing easy. Well, this has been a battle from the jump, Sean. Good wreck. Left hand off the window. Nice job by Goodrick of rolling to the rim, but how about the pass, which led the big fella, had enough arc underneath it so he could catch and complete. You have to have better ball pressure. You can't allow a ball handler like Archambault to look over the top unobstructed. Allen driving in on Cabateros, nice. rolls it over the front. Hey, that's a tough shot it because is. he took some contact, but he did the right thing. He put his shoulder right into the defender and didn't allow him to extend. Eight points now for Josiah Alec. Kansas City will not let South Dakota separate. Tides have led by as many as eight. Down to three now. Cabotero oh. takes it five. I don't know where he lives, but Jack Sigma's smiling. You catch, you drop, the inside pivot. Beautiful. We'll get enough Jack Sigma references. Alec, hey man, back and forth we go. How about the set? You, you bring on a cross screen, you bring Alec, and they, both of these teams right now need immediate timeout because you got a lot of guys playing straight leg. They have played so hard. These guys have not a whole lot left in the tank. Got quite a ways to go before we get that media timeout. Our Shambos three is short. That's why you don't take a shot like that. You're tired. Ooh. What a pass, and Allen can't finish. Kyle's getting a little too aggressive here, and now they turn it over. Lamar. I mean, look, look at him jogging back. I mean, this this isn't the fact that they're lazy. Watch These Marvin guys are Nesbitt. tired. I mean, Marvin Nesbitt on the bench. Hobbled off there before the break. Came in dealing with a lower leg injury. And it looked like after an inspired effort from him, he's got 19 points on the night. Maybe things came to a bit of a head there for him before that last break. Inside out, Archambault. has got to get it off. He does, and it's off the back. Iron pulled in by Lamar. Gilliard all the way to the rim and scores. That's why you don't let him get to the left hand. They've taken that away for long periods of time in this ball game, but in the open floor and the broken floor off the strong rebound by Lamar and the kick ahead, they weren't able to get back and get situated defensively for the Coyotes. Carol Hunt. Again, late shot clock, under five. 
Try to draw the foul, and he does got the bucket to go. What a finish for Cruz Perro Hunt. Pretty good job by Allen of moving his feet, but the head fake, really good job by Perro Hunt because I thought Allen did a pretty good job, but he bit on the fake and got off balance just enough for Perro Hunt for a chance at the end one. Looked like he called bank there. Hey, it's Sunday, prayers are answered. <laughs> Double figures for Perro Hunt. Give him 11 on the night. Doing his job on the free throw line. Seven of eight now. South Dakota, 13 of 15 as a team. Gilliard trying to get free. Here's Lamar. Hayes trying to catch up. Almost got that one to go. That would have been some finish. 64 60 South Dakota. No lower seed as one in this summer league tournament, men or women, to this point. Can the Coyotes become the first? Long way to go. Our Shambles. Anderson almost yep. forcing another turnover. Very clean played game by both of these teams in that department. 13 combined turnovers, 9-4. South Dakota to Kansas City. A lot of those came early. They did. Cop wants another three. It's too long. Feet weren't set, and it was kind of fading to the left. That was a settle. Cop played two seasons at Lamar before making his way to Kansas City. Good job by ah. Gilliard. Been from April of last year up to October, the beginning of practice, and moving forward. That just doesn't happen without a lot of time working, without anyone in there watching. Alec. Blocking foul called against Peril Hunt. That'll be his third. And, and pretty good body control by Alec, too, because watch on the shot fake. This is a lot of momentum to kind of slide to the side. A lot of times you would see somebody put the, the shoulder right in directly, which would have made it an easier call for the official to potentially call offensive, but he had enough athleticism to kind of slide off to the side. Kansas City's free throw shooting. Will it be an issue down the stretch of this game? We're going to see a lot of these over the last 322, I feel like. That's right, and this is a team that shoots 68% overall. And boy, how about the bailout right there by Nesbitt? Who, by the way, is back in the game. Oh, That's noteworthy in itself. The way he hobbled off, you had to question whether or not we were going to see him again in this game. How about the play by Al the back tap? And reset the 20. So a third attempt here for Kansas City now. Gilliard for three. Didn't get anything. Last touch by Nesbitt. So that, South Dakota, defensively, you give a team three chances, most, more often than not, they're going to make you pay, Sean. And South Dakota stood strong there. And especially a guy like Gilliard who shoots the ball very confidently. But that was a shot of frustration. And a big reason for that frustration tonight, Archambeau, a second team, all league performer, but he has earned his stripes defensively tonight on Gilliard. Evan Gilliard, three of 13 now. And that will be a foul on him. So free throws coming for South Dakota. Nice job, a little dribble handoff. Gilliard got caught. He tried to sell it to the official, but he wasn't buying. Watch right there. That's a good, strong cut. He kind of grabbed. Then when the contact came, he tried to sell it. Can't fault him for that. Good job of moving without the ball by Archambault. And this is almost as close to automatic as you're going to get. It really is. Mason Archambault, second in the country in free throw percentage at 92.5% coming in. Two more for him there. 12 points for Mason in the lead. Back to six for South Dakota. Two and a half to play in Sioux Falls. Good look for Alec. 
Another offensive rebound. This one for Evan Gilliard of all people. Nice pass. Oh, our shambled almost got the block. And again, that's the fourth time I can recall Allen sneaking along the baseline. I mean, with the attendance here is fantastic. And Allen is showing, hey, I'm not going to become a spectator. If I remain active, I'm going to be rewarded. And here it's Gilliard that finds it. So Allen to the free throw line for the first time tonight. He's a 55% shooter. Kansas City 9 of 13 now. Pending this one from Shamari Allen. They don't look real comfortable. No. He aimed that one. It didn't come off his hand confidently. And rather than the free flow and the extension, kind of known as the fish hook, you know, he was just kind of pointing the ball. That one looked better. Yep. It's a simple game, Jay. They wouldn't let me near it. <laughs> the result was much yeah. better for Allen, that's for sure. Cuts the deficit to five, 66 61. How about this? A little half court trap here. Zone look. USD taking a little time here to recognize it. Nice job off that situation. Back to the shot clock. Get it into Damani Hayes. Looking for Boogie Anderson. Shook off his defender. Now we're late into it. It's a kick ball, so they'll reset to 15. Or 20, rather. Excuse me. So, I mean, that, that works out pretty well for it, South Dakota. He can burn a little more time it here. It really did, because that position was going nowhere. It was. Limbaugh underneath now with Anderson. Looking for some help here. Got to be pushing that five. Gets it in finally to Arshamble. This has been a good battle between these young men right here. Comateros and Alex swings it out. Arshamble. Good close by Allen. The shot goes in and out. Boy, nice pass by Commentary. Everything really good execution, just not completed. Nesbitt gets all the way home, but it rims off. Not to the situation yet for Kansas City where you need to foul. And again, if you do, now you're giving them double bonus. Yeah, but you're really, getting close. Yeah, and really smart because now you really have to play it out, especially with Archambault keeping the ball on, on a string. Peril Hunt driving in, up and under, what a finish for Cruz, Peril Hunt! My, oh my! The Coyote Faithful feeling it, Nesbitt shot no good, rebound Common Terrell, and he's fouled by Alec. How about this finish from Cruz Peril Hunt? Nice job of using the rim to shield himself from a couple of closing defenders. But that shot was made possible as dramatic and awe-inspiring as it was, Jay, because they were they caught a break. Remember, the shot clock was about ready to un to, to go off, and they had a kick which allowed them to get the reset. Yeah, we kind of pinpointed that right away. Yep. This could really work in their favor, and it certainly did. The other thing that's worked in their favor is going to the line and converting. South Dakota 17 of 19 at the free throw line tonight. Kansas City gets another shooter on the floor with Cop. 45.3 seconds remaining. Good Gilliard job, hung up. Oh. Yeah, and almost stolen it is. Up ahead, Anderson, showtime coming. <laughs> the flurry continues. South Dakota. Another rebound, and the Coyotes are going to be moving on to the Summit League semifinals. Oh, Jay, how about the sequence? by a member of the all-defensive team here in the Summit League. It starts on the defensive end. And the Vermeer, and they say, get down and boogie, send it in. 
Nice job by Anderson going end to end. The defensive end of the floor has paid dividends for the Coyotes tonight. And Archambault adds a little icing from the free throw line. This, this was an entertaining game. It really was. I mean, both of these teams, they went at one another. Hilliard picks up his dribble. Alec will fire a three. Harrell hunts. And they're going to back off here, get it into the front court. And the Coyotes are going to dribble it out. Great crowd again at the Denny Sanford Premier Center, and they were entertained from start to finish.